Hello my cross stitch friends. Welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda May and this is my channel Artith Design where we celebrate counted cross stitch, sustainable stitching, and making all the things. It is the week of Christmas for those of you who celebrate Christmas. Merry Christmas. Last night was the winter solstice here in the northern hemisphere so happy winter belated winter solstice to those of you who celebrate and uh, I'm just so happy to be here. I'm so happy that you're here. This is Luna Moon. Loki Apple is somewhere doing some, some sort of shenanigans. He might pop his head in. I am here to talk about my stitching this week. I have three works in progress that I would love to show you that are cross stitch. I want to do my giveaway winner who won. And then I would like to show you some of my projects that I have done. They're not UFOs, like unfinished, you know, abandoned projects. They're full, they're finished projects that I have yet to FFO. And in the spirit of Pam and Steph of Just Keep Stitching, I'm going to show you my under the bed box. Now I say that loosely because I don't keep my stitching under my bed, but I love their term for where their stitching is that's complete but not fully finished. So I'd like to show you some of those. And just, just to let you know, some of them are my own designs that I have decided not to release, you know, as a designer. <laughs> and I have not fully finished them. So you're gonna see a couple little tidbits like that, or maybe I will release them, who knows? 2020, almost 2021, let's see what the future will bring. Uh, <laughs> I, I will close out the show. Uh, I'd love to show you some of the sewing things that I've been working on and show you my finished quilts that I got back from the quilt shop that did the long arm quilting service stuff for me. So without further ado, I've got my little sidekick here. Let's see if she'll let me <laughs> show you some cross stitch. Yay. Oh, I, I also, I almost forgot. I have some Christmas cards to show you from all of my beautiful thank you all who sent me a Christmas card so I have those to show all right we're gonna start with my sweetheart hill and I know you've seen this a lot I keep showing it I keep working on it and it just it hasn't gotten finished yet but I am inching closer and I'm so excited about that I am stitching this on a piece of 36 count chickpea linen and oh my gosh it's so close it's all rolled up because I stitch in the hand and I did not iron. So I finished the I belong with you. Oh, I'll pull the camera closer. Okay, hold on. I'm going to move you. Okay, here we go. I always start the show out with the camera a little further away because I never know if the pugs are going to jump and knock the camera. So it's always kind of far away. So oh, that was my backside. I got the lady done with her dress. And so I need to add her head. Right now she's just a disembodied lava. And I've got to add the gentleman here. And I started adding the flowers. So I am I am inching closer and closer to having this completed. As you can see, I've got to finish the flowers here, the gentleman. Then they're holding a, a heart together. So I've got, and then I've got two more flowers here to finish. And then I will be all done. And I'm, I'm thrilled. So it's, this has been a real labor of love. Uh, my grass, I'm happy with that. That is the Sulky 4020 and it's that variegated green. I used a variegated, the red work variegated Sulky for the house. And then I've just been kind of pulling and, and working as I can. So here you can kind of see, I've just got some random colors kind of thrown in there. I need to grab actually a couple more to finish the top flowers. So I'm excited for that. One of the things that I have been, one of my shortcomings is I have the silky thread, but I haven't been putting them on little tiny bobbins so I can keep several different bobbins with the same color in multiple projects. So if I need, I, that's been my fault. I haven't sat down and done that. So if say I need, this green here, I just have it in this project, so I have to remember that it's in this project if I need it for something else. So that's been a bit cumbersome. So I need to get on actually 
bobbinating on the sewing bobbins, like making my own little bobbins of the, the thread <laughs> so I can keep it in multiple projects. All right, the next piece that I worked on is by Sitka Stitches, um, Gale, and it's um, an 80s pattern, but you can still find it on the secondary market. And I was told that um, there's still some that you can purchase, like um, at various like quilt shops and stuff up in Alaska and some needle workshops up there. So, you know, don't, don't be discouraged <laughs> if you see something. I got more of the centerpiece done and I'm really happy with how it's turning out. I'm stitching it two threads over two and this is like a it looks like a fiddler's cloth but it's uh like an even weave and I would say it's like a 32 count and I really like it and you have all been so tremendously supportive and let me know that I should make that stand up using the Vana, the Twisted Stitcher finishing tutorial for stand-ups. So thank you all so much for that. I will, I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm working along. I, this is one that I, I pull out sporadically and I told myself I really need to finish this project before I start the other projects from the Northwest series that I started. I finished the Totem earlier this year, which I have to show. Um, and I wanted to start the whales. Uh, Kim had sent me the pattern, so I wanted to start and finish the whales. We shall see. Those will be on my 2020 um, plans. I'm going to go ahead and put my hair up. I uh, hope you don't mind. My hair is getting long for those of you who have been following my journey from shaved head to full head of hair here. <laughs> All right. So the next Thing I want to show you is my prairie schooler and I've been working on two different ones the the little Halloween this one is night flight and then I've also been working on tea is for time and I don't have the original pattern to show you but it's part of their alphabet series there's s t and u I think in the one pattern. So S for sewing, um, T for time and U for umbrella. I, but I didn't, I didn't grab it. So I have made some mistakes on both of these pieces. And so I'm kind of at a standstill on what to do next. The, the witch here, if you remember, I stitched her with just one strand of black not my favorite so I learned my lesson that was just one strand of sulky on this 32 count with the black it doesn't show up as well so I went ahead and switched over to the 337 one that it calls for two strands for the houses and the moon and I like it a lot better but you can see she's almost like a little shadowy and you can see the the threads not my favorite I also I've missed a stitch somewhere so it's off down here from the it's like one or two stitches off so I I was hemming and hawing about whether or not to do the border and now I think I'm not I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in the back stitching all here and get the bats in and I won't put any of the fence or the 1331 so it's it'll just be the center motif and I'm okay with that I think I think it'll look nice and it'll be small enough that it can be an ornament and I I think it'll I think it'll look good. Oh my goodness. I'm like a little disheveled here. Uh all right, so T is for time. Now I've made some mistakes. I fully acknowledge my mistakes on this pattern, and I don't know if I am going to move forward or if I am going to uh rip out, uh, cut out frog um the mistake okay so the original pattern has calls here for a brown a gold and a dark beige for this half of the clock and I had already done a conversion to this kind of green and this is again it's sulky one strand on 32 well I was like I don't really like the browns maybe I should do like a purple because I have blue and purple and then I was gonna do tea for Time Lord for Doctor Who so I thought it's okay to 
make the colors a little unconventional. So I pulled some purples and I stitched them. And again, my problem, stitching at night without the correct lighting, I pulled the colors. I'm like, those look great. So here we are. <laughs> so I'm not sure if I like them or not. I feel like this is way too, this fuchsia purple is too saturated. I don't know what to do. Do I rip it out? Do I keep on going? So this one I've put away again until I can make up my mind <laughs> what I'm going to do. I don't know. Hi, sweetie baby. You okay? Hmm? Yes. I'm wearing my Ba Humpug shirt. My pugs are happy over here. Yes. Well, they're not terribly happy. We had snow and it's it's been around for several days. Um, and pugs do not like snow. Well, they like to eat the snow. They don't like to go out and go for walks or any of that stuff. So anyway, those are my, what I've been working on this week. Giveaway winner. So I asked two videos ago uh, if anyone would like to win one of the Mandalorian little felt things that I made. I did the, the free tutorial on um, making the little baby Yoda. And so I had made several and here I just have little heads. I'm still working on the bodies. And I asked you all if anybody wanted to win a little a little child, a little kid, which I know we know the name, but I'm not saying it because spoilers. <laughs> and I, so what I did is I, I did the, the random number generator after I sorted through my public subscriber list and the word kid. And the winner I got was Amy. Oh, and there's a pug. Come here. Come here, you heard that motorcycle. Come here, come and say hi to the camera. Come here, come here. Come here, little bug. Come here, come and say hi. Come here, come here, come here. Come and say hi, come and say hi. Oh, little Loki apple. He's been wearing his sweaters all week. He has just been so cold and miserable. And I I, I like to say he's part cat. So <laughs> it's just been, it's been a trip. So, and then they have their little winter coats. They've been going out and... Yes, I'm one of those pug moms and I am I am fine with it. All right, so that so Amy won my giveaway for a custom kid and the, again, there's a free tutorial um online American Felt and Craft uh, if you'd like to make your own. Let's do Christmas cards. I want to thank everyone who sent me a Christmas card. So I have them here and I so I'm just going to thank everyone. I got a, a lovely card from Nancy and she sent the kids some stickers. Thank you. All right, oh, pugs are going down. I got a wonderful and thoughtful postcard from Diana. Thank you, Diana. Sally sent me this beautiful card and she sent me a picture of wild turkeys, which is awesome. I, I, I have the wild turkeys there put up somewhere. <laughs> I forgot to grab it. So got that. Seasons greetings from Canada. This is from Jill. Thank you, Jill. Uh, Angela, she's got the beautiful soap company. Sent me Christmas card. Thank you, Angela. Jenny, long dog stitcher, sent me her beautiful face. Thank you, Jenny. <laughs> She always leaves the funniest little hashtags after listening to me. I I speak on my videos extemporaneously. Like I just, I don't have a script. Well, I have a loose idea of what I'm going to say, but some of the stuff that comes out of my mouth, she makes sure to hashtag it and I appreciate her for it. And then uh, finally, I got a, a nice Christmas card from Sulky of America, which was really nice. Um, I've done some freelance work for them. And so it was nice to get a card from them. So yay. So thank you all who have sent me a card and I have not gone to my mailbox in a, in a little bit. So if, if there, if I missed a card, I will make sure to, to say and show on the next video. So thank you all. It means the world to me. It really does. <laughs> okay. The next thing I want to do is my under the bed box or things that I've finished, but have not 
fully finished. So let me move some goodies around. If I put anything on the floor, it is fair game for the pugs. And we cannot have that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All right, the first piece I have that I want to make into a drum is my piece, uh, this Lindy Stitches. And then I went ahead and made this into the lock, my version of the Loch Ness Monster. So this is my stitch. <laughs> I still haven't done her shoes uh, because I didn't know what kind of, if I should do the yellow shoes or what. So she's like 99.5% done. So, but I need to finish her and I was gonna finish her in a drum. So that's my first piece. My second piece that I need to finish, and I had wanted to finish it this year for my home tour, for my uh, Flamingo Whimsical Tree. Oh my gosh, I'm having a hard time here. Sorry, babe. Sorry, my loves. All right, this is the Tropical Hot House Petunia. This came, I got this at Market this year. I ordered it from Gulf Coast Stitcher after watching Julie, after watching her live streams from Market. Um, many of you know that I, this year in March, I had my, uh, the first week of the recovery <laughs> from having gallbladder surgery, but I got to sit and watch all the YouTube and the, and the Instagram stories. So I watched Julie as she went from room to room as I gawked at all of the things. So here is my version of the pattern. I did not add the tree. I did not add the fruit, uh, or I did add the fruit. I didn't add the sun, excuse me. So this is on a piece of 14 count Ada and I pulled all my own colors. And then in the end I did um, a couple um, metallic stitches here of blue. The, the, the bicycle was my first time using the DMC satin. And so you can see my back is not the prettiest, I'm just trying to get weaving those threads in and out to get them secured and that's fine it's okay oh my goodness I'm gonna pull you a little closer again okay the dogs are barking I'm sorry uh and the basket and I added some long stitches over that just trying to kind of fill it out a little bit but who doesn't love a flamingo riding a lemon slice bike I want a lemon slice bike the next two pieces I have here on my stack are projects that I designed myself and they are not done. And it makes me sad, but also it's okay. It's okay. So the first one here is on a tiny little scrap of 32 count star sapphire linen. I stitched this two years ago, maybe three years ago. Hi, sweetie baby. And it is my little merman and he is playing a banjo underwater and I got hung up on his arms and there he has, and he has languished for two years. I have not released him as a pattern, nor do I think I will, but I had a fun time working. At, I added beading and metallics for my banjo and like the sea urchins starfish and fancy flosses just practicing with some of those my very uh, when I was a brand new designer learning and, and doing stuff the second one here I had wanted to send to my mom um, for the two years of the campfire in Paradise California my mother uh, lost her home and all of the she's alive um, but I wanted to send her this piece but it, it got really painful and I haven't finished it it's it's been really tough for me and I know a lot of people are having a hard time and suffering. So I'm not gonna carry on. Um, I, I worked, I used the Black Forest or Cherry Forest. It's a DMC variegated thread here, the red heart. And then this was the traditional, the paradise sign. Um, when you're driving into town, it says you are ascending into paradise. And that was that sign that was there before it burned down. So I have not finished that. All right, so the next ones are, no, I, I didn't design, uh, I just haven't finished. So the first one is the Creepin' It Round. 
and I got this kit from Karen. Thank you, Karen. So this is the piece. I had, I shoulda, coulda, woulda started this on a piece of green like it recommended, but you know, I defiant and impulsive. So <laughs> I just, yeah, here we go. So I did it on the white and I kind of fumbled around with some stuff, but here it is. And I have the, the stuff to finish it. It came with the, the lady dot or not the lady dot the color, excuse me, the color in cotton, beautiful finishing things, which I, I love color and cotton. I love it. And congratulations. And um, they just officially moved into their larger, bigger, more beautiful space. And I wish them all the success. <laughs> so I gotta, I want to finish that. This is a piece out of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher this summer. And I used, these are the threads from the old tattered flag from their, like their sampler, just a collection of threads I purchased on a whim from their website. And I stitched this up and I love this piece so much. I just don't know how I want to finish it. Uh, it was a really fast and enjoyable stitch. I thought I'd put it up here when I put my lighthouse pieces back up after the Christmas cardinals and stuff go down. I, I don't know. I also feel like I need to make uh, a Susie Reno display wall with the the shelf thingies so I can display and have a moving art gallery. I really like that in her new home. She has it and it's gorgeous. So I feel like I need to copy her. I do. I do. All right. The next one here. This one has been it's been wrapped around, I've put it up temporarily around spools. I've kind of like stuck it in my tree. Like I've done all, I need to officially finish it. Like it's on, <laughs> it's still on a big piece of paper, big piece of fabric. I stitched this. This is out of the 2019 Halloween issue from Just Cross Stitch. And I used the brown is the variegated sulky and it's called milk chocolate brown. It's one of my favorites to use. So I did that. I need to finish that. Here is my totem that I finished and I say finished loosely. I made it into just like a fun little bell pole with just to hang it up because I was so excited to have it done, but I didn't, I, I didn't, I just wanted to have it up and displayed but I didn't officially finish it. So here is my totem piece and I converted all the colors. And then this, I wanna do the whale piece. <laughs> That's part of this, I um, the Northwest series. It was out of the classic cross stitch magazine. Oh, sweetie, you can't get up on the blanket there. Do you wanna sit with me over here? Come here, come here, come here. You wanna come up here? All right. He sees the blankets that I cannot wait to show you all. So I'm going to move, I'm going to, I'm going to lure him up here by putting the blankets on my lap. And then I will go ahead and show you the blankets in a little bit. Okay. Come here. You want to sit? Here. You want to come up? He's just looking at me like I got three heads. All right. Anywho, the next couple pieces that I have, I... Are fairly recent you might remember seeing my pieces so I did the boo here and I just did like a whip stitch finish but I want to think I think I'm going to like uh, I want to officially finish it shh come here sweetie come here shh come here sorry um finish this sorry they're such barkers finish boo. I have Mrs. Claus here. This was a gift uh, kit gifted to me by my friend Grace. Hi Grace. And so I finished Mrs. Claus here. So I need to finish her fully. I, I left enough fabric to do Mr. Claus and I just haven't done it. So I would like to finish her into a cute little ornament. And then I'm going to add like a button or something. She's going to be holding something there, not holding her purse. 
I kind of changed the pattern around. Okay, and then the last couple ones were little kit things that I finished. Uh, Karen sent me this kit by the Bay Needle Art, and it's Joy, and it came with the the finishing goodies. I still need to finish. So I guess it's not finished. I need to finish it. Joy, I didn't get up. I didn't get it done for this year, and but I've got all the goodies to do it. And then I have my 1813 um, flower bouquet, and it was a kit that I got from Kitten Stitcher, and it it's really pretty. And I, it was my first time really working on a piece using the fancy floss, but only one strand. I use one strand a lot with the silky 12 weight, but that's on a 32 count versus a 36 count. So I I really enjoyed this piece. Uh, it it's fun and it there's a larger piece by samplers non not forgotten um, that I think Lisa Smith kindred stitcher she just got back from the framer and so this little piece is in that sampler that's like really big so here's this little piece and again it comes with the finishing I got the kit it came with all the finishing stuff so I need to make a little pillow and figure out how to designate some dough bowls for my finishes that are not for pugs and not for children. So when I figure that out, I will let you know. <laughs> and then the last little piece I have to show you is another one of my designs. And I have, I am going to release it, but I have been working on the cross stitch model of this piece. And I made a huge mistake on my model back in April. I know, it's bad. And so it the the model for my cross stitch has been on hold while I try to figure out how to fix it or how to integrate that mistake actually into the design. So this is my um my fully finished uh this is punch needle and it's um woman with a boat. She's got a sailboat on her head her dress she's got the C and so the cross stitch is very similar to this this is all punched using the ultra punch and um on the number one setting on your ultra punch and then the one strand of sulky and then I've had this in for a little bit so I need to I what I'm going to do with her face it looks a little wonky around her smile I need to actually take a needle and go through and maneuver the threads so that they lay properly for her smile. But this has been kind of crushed. So I have to figure out how to finish her. And then I'll have her and the, the cross stitch piece. And then I, I think I'm gonna release them together. So you can pick one or the other or both. I don't know when that's gonna come out. Again, I made big mistakes and that's okay. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to show you that mistakes happen and, and stuff languishes and I'm not perfect. And that's my story. All right. I'm all done talking cross stitch. So if you want to skedaddle, and I will say sayonara and thank you. If you want to hear about my quilts and some of my sewing projects, I'm going to talk about that for a few minutes. So I asked my husband what he wanted for Christmas and he said he wanted some more masks. He works outside of the home and all of the masks that he has been wearing, I have made him. He went on his own, okay, on his own to the local quilt shop and he picked out the fabric he wanted for masks. I didn't do it, he did it. So he picked out the Michael Miller fabrics. It came out this summer. There were like 50 different colors of the rainbow, all the solids and he and I, I I had wanted these for him, the colors, and he ended up picking them out. So he picked out, this is Michael Miller uh, from both of the, the gray and the black. And he wants um, the purple and the dark green. So I'm going to go and see if they have 
those uh, in fat quarters that I can purchase. So these, this is the Christmas presents I made for him. I modified a free mask pattern that I found online like back in March, April, cause he's got a wider, he's got a fatter face and he's got a beard. So it, need, it needed to be bigger and fuller to go properly under his chin. So we did that and you know, I've been stress eating this year too. So my face got fatter. So I, I went ahead and made a couple of masks for myself that account for <laughs> the, the change in my face. So I made with the fabric I'd gotten, um, it's, this is Moda fabric and it, uh, I made a, a little quilt using this fabric earlier this year. Uh, but I used a piece of it to make a mask for myself and I wanted to show, I just do the elastic and then I pull it and then bury, um, so I use eight inches of elastic then I pull it here and I'll bury the knot. I just do a square knot and I bury the knot and pull it through and so it hides the elastic here. But if the elastic gets worn out, I can, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Um, if it gets worn out, I can just replace the elastic. So there, and I just bury the knot and it goes over the ears. So I made um, a couple for myself and a couple, um, four or five for my husband and he wants more. So he so told me he wants to coordinate like the purple and the green with his, with his sweaters. So I love it. <laughs> All right. I got two pugs on blankets here. I don't know if they're going to let me show you these blankets. They love the blankets. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness. My husband also went and took the quilts to get long arm quilted. Um, and thank you all for your suggestions and encouragement. I tried in Columbia the spring water designs. They were lovely. I had uh, a tremendous experience, a, a good experience with them and their prices. And I appreciate all of you who gave me feedback about quilting prices and everything. It was my first time doing this since I didn't just get one quilt done. I got two and then I finished them both because both the kids wanted them. They both got their quilts on the same day after I added the binding in. So let's see if the pugs let me show you. Hi babies. I'm just going to take the one up. You can lay on these other one. Okay. The first one is, uh, this is the Happy Siberians. And I had my notes somewhere. They're buried somewhere. <laughs> and I, the quilt, the panel I got from the Quilted Raven. And it's a shop in Anchorage, Alaska. And she shipped me them. And I got some of the coordinating snowflake fabrics and the, the artist is John Van Nye, um, an Alaskan artist. So I got the panel and it only had eight of the Huskies. I say only eight, but the panels I did for my son had 16. So she's like, why did I get less than him? Anyway, <laughs> uh, here is the final quilt. So see if I can show you. And I did not follow any sort of pattern. I just kind of cut out and made the squares in the size of the panels themselves. I got half of the fabric at Patches Quilting in Mount Airy. I got the, that my daughter picked out the blue. This piece, it was like a Japanese artist and then the white sparkle here. And then all of the rest came from um, the Quilted Raven. And then, I did not have enough fabric to do the back and so I went on and I ordered um, a, f a, a flat sheet, like a flat cotton sheet um, to use for the backing. So this is just a flat cotton sheet and then they cut it down and the, I don't know the pattern they use but it's like got a snowflake. I'm sure many of you who are familiar with long arms know exactly what pattern this is. Um, but it's got the snowflake pattern and my daughter absolutely loves it. This is the, this is her Christmas present. She loves Huskies and wants a Husky 
and every day she wishes for a husky. So here is her quilt and I love it. And I'm so happy she loves it. <laughs> I'm gonna put it over here, see if the dogs, the dogs love it too. I think they know I made it with love. <laughs> okay, you have to get off. I'm gonna show them the other quilt. I'm gonna show them the other quilt, okay? Here, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, this quilt is uh, my son's quilt. He loves it, but he told me the whole time he didn't like it, he didn't want it. I'm literally sewing the, the, the binding on and he's telling me he doesn't want it, he doesn't like it. And calling me a butthead, because he's three. <laughs> but once I was done with it that night, he immediately wrapped himself up in it, told me thank you, and promptly fell asleep. So there you go. This is Kim Green uh, P and B textile, and it's got 16 of the bird patterns. Eight, eight are facing one direction, and eight are facing the other. And then all the batiks I got from Patches and I got the panel at Patches. So a cut, just a few of the fabrics I had already in my stash, like this purple I got from Trish at Threads Entwined, but most all the other ones were all from Patches. So it, it is big and it is colorful. And on the back they did, I think it's called Easy Peasy and I, again, did not have enough of this fabric. I bought four yards of this to do in the back. I didn't have enough. I didn't want to quilt, like do patterns on the back. So I just bought a sheet, again, like a 400 thread count cotton. And then this is the pattern they chose for it. And I think it turned out really nice. So it's, this this quilt is, a, is bigger than my daughter's just because it's got this, it's got extra panels and the really cool thing is my husband helped me and we pieced it together and he helped, he helped me fix, put everything together. So it was really a labor of love. And I'm very happy with it. And I wanna thank all of you for your tremendous encouragement. I would have never, I don't think I would have finished these without all of your help. So with that, I really, I want to thank you all so much for being such a light in my life this year. I, it's been a difficult year, as you all know, and I just really appreciate the companionship, viewership, and support of my channel and of my artwork, whether you have purchased one of my designs, downloaded one of my designs, purchased one of my books off of Amazon, or, shouted me out on social media. I, I really appreciate all of you. I have felt less alone and felt really grateful to have such a beautiful community to be a part of. And I appreciate you all so much. I hope that you all have a beautiful holiday and whatever that entails. Um, Please know that I send you all my love. Please know that I appreciate you. Please, please know that you matter, that your stitching matters, and that your safety and your health matters. Uh, Merry Christmas, uh, happy holidays, and I will talk to you all soon. Thank you. Bye.